Welcome to the Powerlifting and Power Ballads podcast, where we bring you a weekly dose of powerlifting news, tips, and training advice with a touch of 80s rock ballads. This podcast is presented by Team Roar Powerlifting, your source of the most comprehensive coaching and meet day preparation. Here are your hosts, Josh Roar and Laura Sturm. Welcome to episode 141. Hey, Josh Roar, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm okay. Excellent. So I saw the video that you posted on Instagram of the paintball noises. Mm, that is ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. Like, is the, yeah. Like my assumption was you were exaggerating it, but after listening to it, like you didn't even do it justice. It's ridiculous. No, it's really bad. So anyone who's who's listening and doesn't know what Josh is talking about, yeah, I moved out to the country for some peace and quiet and some asshole built a paintball field about 200 meters away from my house, directly across the street from me, and likes to play paintball tournaments um, all weekend long. And it's not just the uh, the whole like shooting thing, it's the yelling. Just, it's really, and it goes on for hours. Yeah, so TBD, we're we're yeah talking to people in the county and seeing what's going on because uh it's really unacceptable not okay it's like anybody who watched that would go that's not reasonable <laughs> yeah 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 i agree it's it's completely ridiculous it's utter and complete bullshit and i, I like sports i like paintball i know big surprise dan used to be a pro paintballer really that is something yeah. i did not know dan's I know. trivia Dan Storm trivia. He used to play pro paintball. So he was like, oh, hey, a paintball field's going in. I'll get to play some paintball. And the guy never invited him over. And we're like, that's weird. And then we realized, oh, it's because if he rolled up, he'd realize that this isn't just like friends and family. Yeah. Probably. You know, this is just, right. yeah, this guy being a dickhead and taking money under the table. And yeah, I could talk all day. I'm pretty pissed off about it. Yeah. Yeah, very. Glad I got you riled up. Yeah. Oh, trust me. I was already riled up. I talked to so many people from the county today that I'm like, what do you mean you can't do anything? The mm -hmm. fuck? Yeah. But there you go. So anyway, how's powerlifting? It's great. Uh, <laughs> April Gadsby lifted this weekend at the Georgia Ladies of Iron. She went seven for nine. She hit a, uh, a two and a half kilo PR squat, a five kilo PR bench five kilo PR deadlift and a 15 kilo PR total. So not too bad. Nice. And shout out to Gretchen uh, for stepping in and handling her kind of last minute. Uh, yeah, it was good. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. Go April. Yep. So update on the uh, Trueborn knockout meet. Last week we said that the meet sold out in like two minutes and six seconds or something like that. While they reopened, like, so right when the podcast was published, they had already announced that they reopened registration and they added a second day. So they basically doubled the cap from one. I think it, it was capped at 60, I believe. And currently it's sold out at 111 and it's two days. So it sold out like okay. another two days later. So yeah, that's wow. pretty crazy. And that's all the way in August. Um, so I was looking at all the meets in Georgia just to kind of get an idea of how many are left and when you can get in. And the July 1st USA powerlifting lift fueled meet still has uh, availability. So if you're looking to do a meet in the summer, that is the lone meet in Georgia that still has uh, capacity. So um, if I were you, and you were wanting to compete, I would get signed up like now. Don't wait. Because yeah, don't wait. Um, wow. so, so why that, did the one in Alpharetta sell out so quickly? And when there's so I think because of the location? Well, huh. so the I think a couple of reasons. Um Siraj, the new state chair, is the meat director. Oh, and he's hosting okay. it at his gym. So I think he's got a lot of his own lifters doing it. Um, but he's also been hyping it quite a bit. Like, and it's a, it's a, yeah. it's a recurring meet. So it's happened the last couple of years. 
So it's like one of those like regular meats. Um, the lift fueled meats, a new, it's the first time meat this year. Gotcha. So okay. I think there's just, I think all of those things, the I think hype. that's, yeah, the hype, mm -hmm. um, but I, the, the lift fueled meat's going to sell out too. Like, it's just a matter of time. I mean, it's, it's still not until July. So like we have some time and lifters are the worst at signing up. Like they're just, they delay and then they're like, oh man, I missed it. And that's good and bad, I guess, for this meet, because like, it's going to fill up, but it's going to be people that are waiting likely and it's going to fill up like closer to the deadline um potentially uh i don't know because i think everybody that's like planning ahead already signed up for their their meat like either the trueborn meat or you know the lift fueled meat or whatever so mm -hmm. basically we're just waiting on the stragglers to finish signing up and yeah yeah people whatever. wait last minute yes yeah but there's another meat uh the lifting the house meat up in uh i think it's ringgold georgia um, it's on September 9th and registration actually opens for that one on June 1st. So, um, I, I think that one's going to, that that's also, I think a third year meet this year. So I anticipate that's going to fill up pretty quick. So if you plan on doing that one, I would be basically sitting at your computer waiting on that to open on June 1st. So you can make sure you mm -hmm. get in. Right. But yeah, that's pretty much, uh, yeah. Pretty much. Oh, uh, I, I have one update for you. It was uh, published. It was published today. Um, Priscilla Ribic is stepping down as the executive director of USA Powerlifting. It was posted on the USA Powerlifting website today, hmm. or Monday. Monday, I guess. We're recording Monday, so when I say today, actually Monday. Hmm. So yeah. they're going to have a call for resumes. Um, they said uh, at some point here soon. Um, she just get enough of the bullshit. <laughs> I'm yeah, sure I don't know. that can't be an easy position. Yeah, definitely. Definitely not. Mm -hmm. Um, it did say she's going to stay on though, as like the national meet and pro meet coordinator and mm -hmm. the, um, marketing person. Mm -hmm. So basically she'll be doing the, you know, still doing the sponsorship for national, the national organization mm -hmm. and stuff. So, yeah. So, uh, so she's still staying involved, but you know, basically the, the main, controls of everything and the day-to-day -day is going to be somebody new so right and then it's a paid position right that's not a volunteer yeah correct yeah that's a paid so that's a that's a salary i don't know what that salary is um but right. it's probably not worth it whatever it is but <laughs> yeah you know yeah. offset your expenses and your time perhaps but can't imagine it would be right is it a full-time so, position is it intended I'm... to be full-time I believe it is intended to be a full time, but like I said, they haven't posted wow. the actual job yet. So I don't actually know the full mm -hmm. I mean, I, I unofficially, I know just from being on the EC kind of what it entails. And I can right. say it's a, it's a pretty full time job, but we'll kind of see what it looks like. Cause I know Priscilla was kind of doing the executive director role and the, the marketing and the national meet coordinating. So, mm, right. You know, a, I don't know. That's a lot. Yeah, it's a ton. So I don't know what that's going to look like um, in terms of what the post job posting is going to look like. But um, yeah, hopefully we get somebody good in there because uh, it's it's a lot of work and it's a lot of thankless work, too. Yeah, I would think. OK, there was there was um, voting this last weekend on the top five driving songs where we're, we had four lists still keep being voted against. Right. Yep. So uh, we had the <laughs> brown versus green. Uh Okay, so Brown won 11 to 5, and the person that got eliminated was? Ooh, Stacy Metcalf. Oh. So I did not know Green. I did not know that Green was um, her, but Green was my was my favorite list, uh, looking oh. at all of them. So, and, Stacey, you get that. And I also, here's the other thing, though. Nobody told me about this. I, I happened to notice it, but... In round one and round two, I had on her list, No Sleep Till Brooklyn was on there twice because I messed up the list. So no, it, number five was supposed to be Detroit Rock City by Kiss, but I had No Sleep Till Brooklyn by the Beastie Boys. But I also had that again as number two, and she still won in the first and second round with the same song on there twice. So like if she would have lost in the first two rounds and I had the error, like, I don't know what we would have done. Cause that would have been basically a, yeah. do it over. 
Um, so maybe I shouldn't have messed with it because I did correct it for round three and then she ended up losing. Maybe I should have left it. <laughs> should have left it because no sleep to Brooklyn. It's crazy. Huh? Yeah. Right. Agreed. So, oh, sorry. So, sorry, Stacey. So, round goes on to the next round. We won't say the who championship. that is yet. Yeah, right. The championship round. Then we had orange and sky blue. And orange, sorry, you went down in flames. Well, maybe not flames. It was eight to nine. So you, Ooh, that was you a lost close out one. by a little bit. Yeah. So orange was uh, Michelle Carlasio. Oh, sorry, so, Michelle. You made so it to the final four. Week, That's I know. Final than, four. That was pretty exciting. Better I didn't than make some it. of us. Yeah, right. So next week goes on to brown and sky blue. Look for that this weekend, right? To vote. Yep. Yep. I know I'm the voting. championship. Because I had a favorite list, and it is one of those. Is it? Yeah. There's a very close second. I think is one of those. I have to double check now. I don't remember. Right. It's hard to remember because the colors don't went with things. We could do the yeah. list next week by uh, next time with by the the number one song or something like so that it, there's a. I don't know, but then you're judging on that song. Never mind. Keep going. <laughs> Okay. So anyway, uh, the voting is going to be this weekend and the winner of that does win the tournament and we'll get $50 or a hundred dollars, 50 or a hundred. What did we even say? I don't even know anymore. I have to look at the previous post. You get some team roar swag. I think it's a hundred, but I don't even remember what we advertised. I have to look. $1 million. $1 million. Yeah. It wasn't that anyway. So somebody will win something. Yeah. Somebody will win something. Great job guys. <laughs> Yeah, we're good. Powerlifting situation. Bum, bum, bum. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. A lifter at your gym dumps a squat bar onto the safety pins in the power rack. After they unload it, they roll the bar on the safety pins, and it's clearly bent. The lifter puts the bar back on the rack, makes eye contact with you, and then immediately grabs their stuff and leaves. What would you do? <laughs> it depends. Um, I, I probably would just like beeline for him and be like, Hey man, you like, you need to, or lady, whoever it is, you need to, uh, you know, at least let the gym know the bar's bent, but assuming they like dart out and I don't catch them. Like I'm, I'm totally ratting them out. Like not to get them in trouble, but like, that's a hazard, a safety hazard. If somebody like tries to use the bar, not realizing it's bent and then somebody gets hurt, like that's a liability. So, um, yeah. I would definitely let the gym staff know that the bar was bent. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Even even if I don't say who it was, but I'm pretty sure I would say who it was because that's a shitty thing to do is just duck out and like not tell anybody. Well, and people go, well, it's a gym, you know, they have money and I can just like if if this stuff happens and it's because of what I did and I duck out, no one's going to know and they're fine. But as a former gym owner, yeah, don't do that. Yeah, that's that's, that's shitty. really not cool and even as i mean as a gym owner like i mean i'm not a gym owner but if i was like i i feel like i wouldn't be super pissed off if that person came and said hey i accidentally dumped the bar and it it bent you know even if i have to replace it yeah that sucks like i don't want to spend money on a bar but it's like you know at least you you like fessed up to it and told me about it before like somebody got hurt from trying to use a bent bar or right yeah no gym owner is gonna be like you're gonna pay for this Or, or there's like five weeks of bad reviews on Google about the bars being bent until I realize, you know, which bar it is. Right. Right. You know, just, just, yeah, I would just say, yeah, I I would definitely tell the gym and I would, you know, I'd probably try to get the person to tell the gym either way. Like, yeah, that's not cool. Yeah. Either way. Not cool. Don't, don't, don't damage things and then sneak out. Please. No, I used to have to like, you know, do everything like cleaning the bathrooms and, I was amazed at how many people would, you know, and I'm not trying to make it sound bad, like everybody did this, but it did happen on a pretty regular basis. Like you'd go in and there's like paper towels over the floor. Like, like yeah, like really you're washing your hands, put it in the trash. Women are the worst at that too. Like you think the men's bathroom would be the one that's trashed. It was always the women's. The part that gets me is like when people put paper towels in the urinals in the men's bathroom. Like why, like what, what possible reason is there to do that? And then the thing gets clogged up. Like I see that all the time. That's terrible. I, I don't see that all the time. <laughs> like I want to know who's doing it because like it makes zero sense. I, I have no, no concept of why that is even 
like the only scenario I can think of is like you're walking the paper towel to the trash can, you trip and fall in an effort to catch your balance. You like reach for the urinal out of a reflex and accidentally drop the paper towel in there. Like that's the only scenario I can think of. So whoever is doing this, like is very clumsy is my only possible rationale for it. Wow. And that's really something you see all the time. Pretty often. I mean, not, not every day, but I'd say like once a week or so I, I, I'll see, see a urinal at the gym with paper towels in it. Not okay. People. Yeah. But most people are awesome. Most people don't do that shit. Cause I hate when people are like everyone sucks. Like, no, not everyone sucks. There's just a few people that suck. <laughs> there, there's, there's at least one person that sucks bad. Anyway. Yeah. Well, I mean, my neighbor sucks pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn paintball guy. It's yeah. probably him. He's driving into Duluth. Motherfucker. Oh, did I say that? You're concerned about it now? This episode <laughs> what, 141. 41. There's at least there's at least an F bomb every episode, and now you're concerned. We should do like an F bomb blooper reel. That yeah. uh, if we if we can figure out a way for for AI to go through and pull all of them out, I'd be happy to do it. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah. Oh well. Once AI gets a little bit smarter or a little yeah. bit dumber, we're not sure. All right, here's our new lifter tip. We're going to bring it back to the powerlifting. Thank you. All right, new lifter tip. Thank when God. you go out, <laughs> when you go out for each bench attempt in a meet, take five to 10 seconds to explain to the spotter in detail how you want your lift off to be given. Yeah, 100%. There's so many issues that happen on a lift off that lifters get upset about, but it, ultimately it's up to them to take the time and you have 60 seconds, take a few seconds and explain how you want it because every lifter wants it a little bit differently. And even if you tell them on your opener, tell them again on your second attempt, tell them again on your third, because as a spotter and loader, like I can't remember what every individual lifter wanted from the previous round. Like sometimes you remember, you know, one or two, but like to remember all 14 lifters in the flight, exactly how they want their handoff and what their cues are. And, you know, this person counts to three and then it's one, two, three, go. This person nods, this person takes a breath and then lift off. This person wants the bar like out over their chest more. This person wants it like, uh, you know, lifted up off the rack and set down real easy. Like there's so many different variations and the spotters are typically pretty good at giving you exactly what you want, but you have to communicate that. So I think that's where, you know, you can really help yourself out by just taking a few seconds. And, and and we do this in training is we practice like the last couple of weeks telling the spotter how you want your handoff, because what makes sense, what makes sense in your head might not actually make a whole lot of sense. So, you know, that gives you a chance to say what you think you need to say. And then you could have the person giving you the lift off, be like, that actually doesn't make it real clear. Try saying it this way. That way, when you get there, there's no breakdown in communication. Like everything is like clockwork, exactly what you want. And, you know, th those are variables you can control. So, you know, if if you don't take the time to tell the spotter how you want your handoff, like ultimately a bad handoff is on you. That's that's good advice to actually practice what you're going to say and tell someone else that. So they go, oh, that makes sense. Because, yeah, I don't know that I ever did that. I hope I made sense to people when I told them what I wanted, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, and I don't know, sometimes you're in that, that moment where you're like, I gotta go. You know, they said bars loaded, I gotta go. Like just just slow it down yeah. and tell people. And there's there's no way that they're remembering what you want from time from like, no. <laughs> Not happening. So you gotta keep telling them. Right. Yeah. The only time somebody remembers like for me, like as a spotter, the only time I remember is if like somebody is just like super outrageous with how they want something. Like I remember that because it's like, all right, I'm going to tap my right foot three times and then take two deep breaths. And, you know, and then I'm going to nod. And on the second nod, that's when you lift off something outrageous like that might stick with me, but in general, like it's not going to be the case. So just definitely yeah. explain it very clearly. Don't talk too fast, like speak loud and clear and explain what you want and they'll they'll usually do a very good job cuz it really does suck to get a bad handoff. Yeah. Captain obvious, I know. <laughs> Captain obvious. Captain obvious. 
All right. Well, that's all we've got this week. And make sure you vote this weekend. I won't tell you which which list to vote for. Just vote for the better one. Voting is on Instagram at PL Ballads Podcast. Voting will be sometime this weekend. Keep an eye out for it. And until next time, I guess we will catch you all later. Bye now. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed today's episode of the Powerlifting and Power Ballads podcast, please remember to subscribe and share it with your friends.